This is 7 Days of XYZ, a YouTube channel where I explore a new topic every week related to companies and technology. And this week is about artificial intelligence business cases. And today let's talk about feelings. So I've been talking about feelings in another video series on this channel. And that one was about understanding users based on AI. So what I did in that week was that I showed you an example of how you can use AI and more specifically NLP to understand based on what people write, what they feel. So there is a tool where you can basically, based on the language that people, people use, you can predict whether people are kind of happy or sad or whatever they feel about the text. In this episode, I want to show you some other tools that are really cool when it comes to feelings and understanding feelings based on, on on you as a person. So my journey in this kind of started with seeing the documentary The Best Movie Ever Sold by Morgan Spurlock. Morgan Spurlock is a documentary filmer. He was the one doing Super Size Me where he ate one burger every day for 30 days. And The Best Movie Ever Sold is about marketing. He's basically making a movie about product placement by by using the te techniques of product placement in the movie. So like one thing he's doing is like he's offering the rights to name the movie on eBay. So he's like selling the rights to naming the movie on eBay to, to the highest bidder. And he's talking about something called neuromarketing. And neuromarketing is using neuroscience to understand consumer behavior. And it's a very creepy feel. <laughs> it's like they have, for instance, fMRI scanners, you know, one of those scanners where a person is going into a tunnel and then you see the kind of which areas of the hell is lighting up in that person based on a simile. So what they do is that they put people inside of that tunnel they show them, for instance, a movie trailer, and then they see, like, based on that movie trailer, what kind of feelings will be triggered by that movie trailer. And there's other tools to doing this. Like, there's one tool called Affectiva, because, like, these fMRI scanners are insanely expensive. Like, I think it's like 1 million Swedish crowns, which is kind of the equivalent of, you know, 100,000 US dollars. So, having one of those for a business that is doing new marketing is yeah you know it's not possible so there's one company called affectiva what affectiva is doing is that they have been it's, it's an mit project from the start like they've been scanning seven million faces and classify these faces based on what feeling they've had so they've looked at different people and said like this person is sad and this is the face that people make when they're sad and this per person is happy and this is obviously the face that people do when they're happy and they, they're measuring, you know, the points, the various, various movements in the face. And based on those movements in the face, they're able to say what kind of mental state this person is in. I think these marketing things are interesting, but as I said before, also a bit creepy. What I've been doing that I think is not as creepy, but maybe a bit weird <laughs> is I, I, I bought myself an EEG measurement band. So a band that is basically measuring my brain state. Um, so we have five different uh, waves, bra brain waves uh, that are, you know, the, 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 the brain has electrical uh, signals and, and the waves of those signals can be measured with EEG. And the tool that I have is using those, those five various states and it has a machine learning algorithm that is basically saying if the brain waves are in a certain way, this person is calm. So it's measuring my, my brain and then it's saying if I'm calm or not. And it's, it's a meditation tool and I've been using it as a meditation tool. But what I've also done is that I did some home experiments with trying to understand the factors that are leading towards me being more calm 
the experiment that I did was super simple. I, I went to work out like usually uh, one hour, uh, either lifting weights or playing tennis with my dad. And in the afternoon I was doing meditation and then I was measuring the calmness of my mind with, with this product that I have, the EEG measurement band. And I found out that on the days where I didn't work out, I was 48% calm. And on the days where I did work out, I was 72% calm. And, and these tests are statistically significant. So it seems like for me, the effect of working out is contributing to a mental state of calmness. And like the <laughs> argument against is like, well, you could have just felt this by yourself. And, and obviously like this is something that I have felt myself and I mean that in itself could kind of lead to, to these results. I think the interesting part here is that, you know, the technology is getting democratized. I couldn't do EEG on myself before, but now it's, it's like a couple of hundred bucks to, to do EEG on myself. And it opens up the opportunity to start to think about in more quantitative terms, like how is different stimuli affecting my own mental state. And I think that the new technologies that we have, for instance, like fMRI, whenever that becomes more, more available, like at the moment, fMRI is still ex is super expensive, but like EEG, what can we do with these technologies? And what should we do with these technologies? Because like, should implies that we can, but also like, just, just the fact that we can, doesn't imply that we should like we have to think about like what is the things that we should do with these technologies and like i don't have a definite answer right now but what i think is that we should use them to be happier we should use them to be more calm we should use them to live better lives and for me that was like trying to figure out the relationship between the activities that i do in my life and my mental states and trying to, you know, become a better person and be being a better version of myself. So what should we use the possibility of measuring our own feelings to? Like, what, what should we use them for? Please comment below. I would love to hear your thoughts on this.